Hi guys, I just wanted to do a quick quick review of herbicides that can be used on your food plots. Most of my work uh, involves forestry herbicides. I use a lot of glyphosate out in the woods for ferns. I uh, also use, as a pre-emergent, I use oust herbicide. Uh, I use um, triclopyr and um, garlon, um, amazapyr those kinds of things for killing trees. Now you can use amazapyr, triclopyr on food plots as well, but it's pretty nasty stuff and, and expensive, you don't really need it. So I've made a list of the very common, commonly used herbicides and what you can use them with and, and what for. So let's start out with everybody's favorite is glyphosate. Um, Glyphosate is broad spectrum, and so it'll kill almost anything that you put it on. Some things are resistant. Clover is actually a little bit resistant. You can go down to about a quart to the acre on clover, and you won't kill your clover. And it might be a nice uh, tank mix when you're trying to get rid of grasses. You know, you, you can mix glyphosate and clethodim uh, to kill grasses in your clover. And also, um, 2,4-D is a broadleaf herbicide that won't touch your uh, grasses, okay? So if you're growing something like uh, wheat, corn, things like that, you might want to use 2,4-D. And the reason that these are very popular is they're, they're real cheap. Now, the problem with 2,4-D is that it's got soil activity, and you want to try and stay away from soil active herbicides as much as you can. You also want to stay away from herbicides that are um, anything but a caution label for health reasons. Um, I don't do any warning or uh, skull and crossbones labels, okay? So, if you use 2,4-D, it's a little bit stronger and nastier, <clears throat> nastier than the 2,4-D-B. But if you wait for three weeks, four weeks, you should be okay, especially if you have some rain. Um, and then you can put in your, you can put grasses in pretty soon, but you can wait three weeks to do your other plants. So that should take care of, if you have a real weedy field and you want to get rid of what's there, a good idea would be to, combine glyphosate tank mix with 2,4-D. Now, if you have an existing clover plot or a legume plot, then you can use clethodim to get grass out of there if you have a grass problem. Clethodim, I would say that um, it doesn't really um, show a lot of uh, immediate effect, but you will see your grasses sort of uh, turn red and kind of fizzle out. It just slows it down a lot and helps it to not compete, not outcompete your clovers. Now 2,4-D or 2,4-D-B, I forgot the B in there. Buterac 200 is a broadleaf herbicide that's not quite as nasty as the 2,4-D amine. So you can spray that right on top of your clovers and legumes. You can also tank mix 2,4-DB and clethodim. And if you want, you can even throw in a quart of glyphosate if it's just clover. Uh, make sure your clover is very uh, mature at the time and you should be okay. So this time of year, it's July almost, uh, you're starting to see some, some weeds like thistle pop up, you might have had an explosion of uh, say stilt grass or something like that that's creeping into your food plots. You don't want that. You want to get that stuff under control. Uh, foxtail can be a big problem this time of year because it, it sneaks up on you. It shows up in June when it gets hot and you might be off doing something else and you come back and your whole place is taken over by foxtail. Now foxtail doesn't like to be mowed, so if you just mow it high and keep it mowed off and never let it go to seed, you'd be all right. 
Okay, so next down uh, on the list are some soil active herbicides. These are a little nastier and you have to be careful with them. They're also pretty expensive. So uh, if you use a Mazamox or a Raptor, uh, that's labeled for crops. But if you go into a clear cast herbicide, it's also a Mazamox, but it's labeled for aquatic uses. So they use it in ponds, but it's the same active ingredient, so it's a lot cheaper. You know, this stuff is very expensive, keeps people from buying it really, but it's effective when you have a chicory clover plot. It won't take out any legumes. So uh, chicory is not um, effective. You have to make sure you read the label and read what, what you're spraying it on. It'll tell you what your um, application rate should be. Make sure that you know how to calibrate your sprayer. Um, that's a whole other lecture probably. And um, you know, a lot of guys will, will uh, write in to forums and say, well, how much should I put in my 25 gallon tank? Well, I don't know the answer to that because I don't know how much your nozzles are putting out. You need to figure out uh, how much your spray rig it's putting on the ground in water, and then you know how much to put in that tank, okay? So always do your calibration first. The other thing is always read the label. Um, I can't memorize all this stuff, there's no way. So what I do is I download the labels onto Google Drive, and if I have a question or if I forget something, I can just bring it up on my phone out in the field and take a look. Oh yeah, okay. You know, I shouldn't really go over this amount per acre or I need to wait a few weeks before planting with this herbicide. Always have your labels available for you to read. I have a bunch of them in my glove compartment that I can pull out. Now when you get down into uh, Pursuit, Pursuit is kind of expensive, but where I ended up putting Pursuit on a field is where I, I had a field that was taken over completely by Japanese stilt grass. And I wanted to kill the hell out of that stuff, but um, which I can do with um, sulfametron, which is the, uh, the oust herbicide that I use out in the woods. The problem with that is you can't plant anything for about a year, it won't germinate. So Pursuit also has a pretty long soil activity, but if you really want to get rid of weeds and then plant legumes, you can still put clover in after Pursuit. You can put uh, cow peas, you can put in your uh, soybeans, whatever, and you'll be fine. So atrazine is used, uh, widely used by farmers. It's a pretty nasty herbicide, has a lot of soil life. Um, if you use it, you can't really plant anything but um, resistant species for at least a year. Uh, it has soil activity and it's good for corn and switchgrass. So if you're putting in corn, atrazine is fine. It won't hurt your corn. Uh, it can be pre-planned incorporated, so you can put it on, if you're going to do uh, some tillage, you can till it right in and it'll prevent anything from germinating and then you can put your, your corn in. Like, it's used by farmers uh, for corn because it's fairly inexpensive to put on and it's very effective and long lasting. You can put it on when you plow your field, put your corn in and uh, It'll be a biological desert. So, um, not something that I subscribe to myself. I like, I don't like to uh, kill everything out in the field the way farmers do. But if you really want a pure corn stand, that's one way to do it. It's also a good way to get a switchgrass stand. A lot of guys, it, it's become a little bit of a fad to use switchgrass as a screening cover around your food plots, and. If you have a weedy field and you want to make a, a switchgrass field out of it, then uh, atrazine or cinnazine is a good uh, choice for that. You can, you can do a burn down with these guys 
and then uh, once your switchgrass is established and it, it's a year later, you can go over it with atrazine and that will release your switchgrass. You can also grow uh, switchgrass and corn together, treat them the same, and then when the corn kind of, then, then you have a food. And switchgrass takes about three years to really develop into a full-size plant. So you could have corn that first year and uh, switchgrass will take over later. So that's a good technique if you want to uh, put in screening and you want it to be there right away this year. You'll have the screening with the corn and food and then you'll have switchgrass going forward. Corn will shade out a lot of weeds too. So, so that's about it. Uh, I think what I'll do is uh, make a chart like this and I'll put it down below. Um, I probably should write a, an article for my blog as well about these. Uh, again, remember to read the label. A lot of times guys will say, uh, you know, what should I use this herbicide on? Or how much should I put on? It's all right there in the label, man. Just read it. It, it doesn't take that long. You can skim down. What I do is I skim through the whole thing. And always read the whole thing because there's a lot of stuff in there that you're not going to know unless you read that label. And there could be some warnings in there, uh, you know, what not to do. It's good to know. Uh, believe me, I've had, uh, I've had some mishaps. So, uh, for instance, you know, atrazine will move through the soil. And house will all move like crazy through the soil when it rains. So you don't want that stuff getting off site. And that's why I like to use contact herbicide and not the pre-emergence that have soil activity. If you use contact herbicide, just stick with these guys here. Glyphosate, 2,4-DB, Clethodim. Those are your go-to herbicides, really. And then if you have, now I like to always mix uh, clover and chicory together because chicory is a lot better uh, this time of year and late into the fall if you don't have a lot of rain. You get into dry weather, that chicory really comes on, on strong in the dry weather. It has a nice long root and it will be very palatable and deer like it better than the clover. So it's good to have it in there with the clovers. If you have a really bad weed problem, you might be better off just going with legumes only. So then you have a, a wide variety of herbicides you can use that won't kill your legumes, okay? The other option, if you have a real bad weed problem, is to go with the Roundup Ready plants. So you can do Roundup Ready soybeans or corn Spray it a couple, three times during that first couple years, and then you get your field all cleaned up, and there should be nothing left uh, coming up uh, after you treat it that way. So that's about it. I mean, if you're going to do uh, just wheat, say you know, normally when wheat is planted in the fall, you usually don't have a, a weed problem by then. But if you do, uh, you do have like thistle and things like that, hit it with some 2,4-D. Um, and then there's always other management uh, activities you can do like if you if you have some thistle, um, I've spot sprayed it. I've also gone through a field, um, you know, it's only a couple acres or even smaller. Just take a weed whacker, whack the flowers off of it and you won't have any thistle. So. That's about it, I guess, for that. And uh, if you have any questions, you know, or comments, or if you have experience with some of these that uh, you want to share with others, uh, feel free to comment down below. Like, subscribe, and keep watching. And uh, good luck. It's uh, starting to bear down on fall here, uh, almost the 4th of July. So it's time to get out your bow. Time to check your food plots, make sure everything's growing good.
and pretty soon we'll start talking about um, the fall food plot mixes that we're going to put in this year. Um, always use a combination of plants and good luck this season.